everyone today we are going to start doing some coloring on this lovely picture this is from the um johanna basford um 2021 planner but um also from johanna's christmas i thought we would start at the bottom here with the uh, gramophone i think it's uh, really quite cute so i'm going to zoom in today i have decided let's get it all in shot Ooh, we're missing some of the ribbon there we go to uh, use my black widow pencils this is quite a small design the planner is um a little bit smaller than the main book so uh, i thought it would be useful to use something that's a little bit the pencils i find hold their point well a little bit smaller than some of the other ones that i have so i'm going to start with the foxy brown because we're going to do this piece down here as a wooden box what I'm going to start with is just, I'm just going to do a layer of brown across the whole box and then I'm going to think about where it might be lighter and darker. So I'm just doing a light-ish layer. I don't want to touch this uh, record player part um, where the needle and things is. That I think will be a different colour. And we've got to make sure we avoid the uh, ribbon as well. And you can see well enough. I can't um, zoom in anymore, so we won't see all of that ribbon. Now this is quite a fun picture, I think. It's uh, it's pretty. I've always liked it, and uh, I think this is the third time I've coloured it because I've got two copies of Johanna's Christmas, and so I've coloured it in both of those. So what I'm going to try and do is do something a little bit different to what I've done before. Now, you may not have seen what I've done before. I have got a flip through of my original Johanna's Christmas. The second copy is almost finished. It may be finished by the time this some video goes out. I'm not sure um, how well I will get on. At the moment, it's the 1st of December. I'm working quite long in advance. Um, and I have got a couple of pages left. So it just depends on how intricately I decide to colour those pages. Now, what I'm thinking here is we need to think about light and shade on the wooden box. I'm going to ditch this pencil and go for a darker one. Let's give it a sharpen. So you can do this with any brand of pencils. Just go in with the darker brown. This is the tarantula, which is the next shade of brown sort of up in the set i've got the spider set by the way i should have told you i've only got one set of black widows and the first thing is just at the base of here i feel there would be a little bit of shadow like that now what i'm also thinking is this brim part here this sticks out and johanna's already actually drawn us some dots underneath it to indicate there's some shadow so we can pop in that shadow line all the way along here and all the way along this side it's a bit awkward for me coming it upside down but that's okay and under the ribbon let's do a little bit there just a thin line under there if you can don't worry if it goes a little bit thicker than you're intending it doesn't really matter all the way around and also under here uh, around there a little bit in there there we go now this part here sticks out and we've got the legs let's do the legs because they'll be slightly underneath and be slightly darker like that now we have this marking on here which we can choose to use or ignore and i also got to think about this is facing in a different direction to this obviously it's on an angle now where is the light coming from if the light's coming straight down or from the side these two sides aren't going to be the same one of them is going to be slightly darker than the other so i'm going to go back to my um foxy brown whoops there it is and think about which side i want to be darker it doesn't really matter i don't think you might think it does and i'm going to do this side a bit darker so i'm just going to do another layer of foxy brown it's quite simple like that and if you have a look, you can see that's slightly darker. Now this again as well, a little bit darker, although it's catching the light a bit, I would have thought because of the angle it's sticking out. But here, if we want this to be a bit lighter than this, we'll need to darken this just a little bit. I hope 
you can sort of follow my logic there, but we haven't done a lot. Let's just fill in there because we've got a bit of a gap. Okay, what I'm now going to do is actually put in some highlights. So I'm going to grab the stink bug, whoops, which is a very light brownish, and I'm going to make this top piece lighter all over by just making it lighter like that. Uh, what should we grab next? Foxy Brown. Whoops. At least you can see the names on these. It's really difficult with the um, polychromos. What I'm going to do with this bit is make it a little bit darker on each edge. I tend to do that when there's a thin line of something. I think where it comes together on the corners it might be a little bit darker. But I think we've sort of cracked that. It definitely looks like it's overhanging, although I haven't gone right to the edge there. Just make sure it goes right to the edge. There we go. Um, this bottom part, I'm still pondering. I think what I'm going to do is where these lines are, I'm going to make it look like it's slightly indented. So I'm going to do a little bit of colouring inside the line and take it slightly towards the centre, like that. And then use the um, stink bug to go around the edge to make it a bit lighter on those areas that we want to look slightly less bright okay and then we got the feet I'm just going to go back over them with the boxy brown I don't want to get rid of that definition where we've got the shadow but I just want to um, go over the base part again down here Um, yeah, I think I'm okay with that for now. I might just put a little bit more foxy brown down here where the ribbon is because it might give a little bit of shadow. Now I'm not going to do the ribbon yet because I want to match it in with my colour scheme of decorations and I haven't thought that far yet. I'm just working step by step. I haven't thought that. So let's do the, um, I say record player, it's a gramophone player. This bit here... Um, this this rounded bit, the side of it, I always think it looks silver. Like it, I don't know. I always think of it as being silver. So I'm going to use my spider web, which is the um, grey. Now the grey is quite pale, so it may not. I may need a bit of help with some black, but we'll see how it goes. And the idea is just you can use Johanna's lines to guide us. She's indicating it needs to be more shadowy here and then lighter towards the middle. If you build those layers up, even with a pale grey look, it's going to work, it's going to show up. And you want to leave some white in the middle so it looks shiny, so it looks like it's silver. Now on the top we have a record, so it's going to be black. Now records are usually shiny. You may or may not remember records. You probably do. I'm sure um, none of us are that young, maybe. I don't know. Even my children know what they are. Black Widow. I remember seeing one on the street once. It's just someone had just sort of dumped one. Now I don't want it just to be solid black. I wanted to catch the light a little bit. So I'm just going to mark out that I want it to be most solid black there and there. So I'm going to fade it towards there. You can make your slightly lighter bit wherever you wish. But I think it just look a little bit more um, realistic I suppose it's not really going to look realistic but it's just catching the light a little bit you think as well it's Christmas there's always lots of lights around now you could use a very sharp black and do some lines around it records usually have grooves in there even a black pen I'm not going to do that I think I'll just mess it up so I'm going to leave it and now we have our actual What's this? Trumpet? Horn? I think it's called a horn, isn't it? Um, I want to know what's holding it up. Surely it's just not balancing in the air. 
surely there there would have been a prop here holding it i don't know i've never seen a gramophone in real life anyway but this i want to do with a metallic look i'm not going to use a metallic pen though i'm going to see if i can do that myself with these i've never tried doing gold with the um with these pencils but let's have a go i'm going to start with the brown now if you know if you've seen me do gold before you know what what you're in for so we start with a huntsman and i need to think about all the areas where it's going to be the darkest so we're going to do the whole thing so to make it look different because we've got different shapes this one i'm going to do the dark on either end and the same here like that and with this rim around the edge you're going to make it the darkest bit at the bottom and we'll fade we'll lighten it towards the top because i think it, there'll be more shadow down here so do dark bit there with the in inner part it's going to be darker towards the this bit like that just doing a gentle layer um if you go over those stars don't worry too much if you i might be doing those in glitter but uh, if you haven't got a glitter pen, then you'll need to be a little bit more careful. And I think we'll go along there, in there, and maybe here. And we can sort of try and add shape at the same time as shine. Here, look, Johanna's drawn us some lines, but I think I'm going to do a tad there as well. Down here and up here. I haven't been sure what to do with this bit. I think I'll go around there and maybe like that i'm just going to pause the video because i need to um have a sneeze hang on a minute right sorry about that so that's all of our um huntsman color so we're going to go in for a lighter um brown um i'm just seeing what i've got here on my desk because i've been using them all having them on the wood so this is tarantula which is the next brown i don't want lots of this because i don't want it being really dark but it helps us transition colors if we um go through our different um browns rather than jumping straight to a much lighter one so i'm really just putting on the smallest amount hopefully you can see we might want to the bigger spaces obviously you can put a bit more in so here you know this is going to go all the way around the edge so that we can pop a bit more in so go over the brown that's there, just extend it out a little bit. Obviously on these larger areas, you've got more space to play with. Um, make sure you go right into the edge of the star. That's it. Okay, so that's that one. Um, should we do that one? Uh, no, I think we'll go to stink bug now and see if that transition works. So, oh, I think I forgot to do this bit down here but anyway we've only got a small space so I'm going over everything again I find if you keep going over and over it helps to blend it all together it makes it look more seamless in the transition from colour to colour and it also helps to keep brightening it because we don't want it looking really dark and if it isn't quite dark enough we can always um, go back over after with the dark colour. So here I'm just trying to extend that brown out a little bit. Can you see just about like that? And here, this is quite a good. Um, almost goldish brown anyway isn't it so I'm going to go right over this now if you think this colour is too similar to this we can go into this tiny gap with a bit of something darker at the end if we think it needs it we can see how it all works out I'm quite excited by doing a lot of them um, Christmas pictures it's quite fun but I am working on my magical jungle as well I have been looking to see if I can do any Christmas themed jungly pictures which uh, I thought was completely unlikely but actually I found a candidate so that's fun and um, what have we got I'm just looking for my next colour um, I 
think yes we'll go for the egg yolk next let's see if that works for us i think it will it's a slightly orangey yellow i think it will help our transition towards our final yellow quite well now we've got quite a lot of space here to fill up actually in this one we're going to go in quite far I need to do a few layers of this one because it's quite faint but it's a very pretty colour once you get it going. I think it's uh, really bringing some warmth into our gold. Uh, now we've got this bit, let's go around. Coming up quite far as you can see now because we've only really got one more colour left. Now these bumps and things I you have noticed I'm ignoring. I may decide not to once um once I've finished. At the moment I'm trying to keep it a little bit simpler for myself. towards the edge you can see it's looking quite shiny I just need another colour to finish it off we're going to go in with a banana and this is quite a bright yellow I want to make sure I go over the top of everything with this colour but make sure I leave a little bit of white paper as I always do so that we've got some shine so on some of these air small areas I've already covered so much of the paper that there isn't really room for this so it's just going over the top of what we've done already rather than extending out any much but that's okay because it's quite a bright colour so we might not want to use too much of it anyway it might not quite look gold there we go so just going over this Taking it up to the top around the side, and up to here, and then all over here. I don't want to leave too much white, but enough to hopefully just make it look a little bit shiny. happy with that apart from the fact that in here this brown hasn't looks a bit too harsh so what I'm gonna do is grab my tarantula and try and soften that brown a little bit by just blending it out and smushing the edge a bit And I'm not using the darkest brown here, the slightly lighter one. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. You can fiddle around with it a bit more if you feel you want to. Now, this wood to me looks a little bit orangey, but perhaps that's okay. And a little bit plain and I'm thinking wood usually has like a wood grain on it and I'm wondering whether we should try to pop that in I think I will I'm going to use my darkest um, brown just give it a really good sharpen this is the um, Huntsman and um, just draw a few little lines on our wood different lengths and spacing between them just so it looks a little bit more wood like it's a bit of a cheat it's not I mean most wood grain isn't just flat but it's a bit easier than trying to do sort of curves and things and I think it just makes it look a little bit better 
it's just me you don't have to do that if you don't want to okay we're going to do the ribbon now um i think we are going to go if i was going to tie a ribbon at christmas around my gramophone as of course i do every year i would make it red so that's what we're going to do and now we have a ladybug i'm just looking at what we have got um, yeah, that's it really. We have the ladybug. So, whoops, there you go. So we're going to have to be a little bit inventive because we've only got one shade of red, but that's okay. So I'm going to go over the whole bow with a light layer of red. Keep it light because we're going to make some areas a little bit darker in a minute and keep some areas light. Now the first thing to remember is that this side of our gramophone was darker than this side. So this piece of ribbon is going to be darker than the piece on the other side. So I'm just giving it an extra layer of red like that so it's slightly darker so that's our first step i'm also going to make it a little bit darker at each end than in the middle to make it look like it's got a little bit of shine on it like that it's quite hard to see because i've pretty much used up all my layers now in this loop here this is going to be our darkest bit of ribbon because it's going to be shadowed in there so we just fill that in with a really solid hard red and here by the knot it's also going to be slightly darker but I tend to also do a little bit of darker on each end there and bring that in so we've got a little bit of lighter areas sort of here right with the um, tassels I tend to make them dark at each end so we get a, what looks like a little bit of shine in the middle and with this bit it would be darker near the bow. Now I want that looks a bit messy to me so I want to make it more and neater but I can't add more red or else it's just going to be too bright so I'm going to grab my white called um Casper and I am going to the areas that I want to be lighter whoops I'm going to go over with the white so that I can burnish a little bit without um, increasing the color saturation now it does make the red go just a tad pink there is a bit here where there's no red at all just gently add a little bit to and a little bit on the bottom of the knot there we go so that's our ribbon done so that's that and now let's see whoops we need to think about the rest let's zoom out a little for you Whoop. the rest of the picture now the red ribbon is obviously now determining what this is all going to be coloured like. So I'm thinking, yes, we need some red in here. We don't want it all to be red. And we have to also think about our ball balls. Do we want them to be solid red? Because it's quite difficult to colour all these details on such a small um, picture. Or are we going to um, complete these details? For me, I'm going to grab my red and I am just going to colour them in really simply. I shall show you. Uh, which one should we do? This one? Hopefully that, is that in focus? I think so. So I'm going to, as I say, really simple. So just go all the way around the edge a few times to get a very intense red colour and saturated and then come in and do less layers the aim is to get less and less as we go towards the middle you should press lighter and lighter as well so that it looks like we've got a shine in the middle and that helps to make it look shiny 
and also more spherical. Hopefully you can see how that looks different Ooh, hang. to that one up there where that one looks flatter and this one now looks rounder. So I think I'm going to do all of the ornaments in this same way. So doing a intense layer of red around here like this and then fading as we go in it's the same method now what you could do if you don't want to lose Johanna's details I mean obviously you can still see them through the red pencil but you could go over them in a different pen you could use a silver or a white pen. Not sure if the white would show up brilliantly because the centre is quite pale because we're reducing the amount of colour we're putting down. A sparkle might be nice. You know, it's a sort of glitter pen. Might look good and for those details. Try and get your transition fairly even, which is what I'm just doing. I'm just going over a few bits to uh, just satisfy me really there we go and um, I'm gonna do the same now uh, this one it's a slightly different shape but we can use the same technique so just going around the edge and we can gently bring it to a more circular or more even shape as we add our layers as well So as I said, it's the 1st of December today and I'm recording this video. So we opened our advent calendars today. Um, I've got a paper one, old fashioned one with pictures. I love those. That's what I always had as a child. And um, it's, um, I had a, a little heart decoration on hanging on a tree, which was lovely. Well, you could just see the branch, not the whole tree. So that was really cute. Um, my sons have been very lucky and not only did they somehow manage to twist my arm when I was in a weak wheeled moment to have a chocolate advent calendar, they were also given a chocolate advent calendar by a very kind neighbour. So this morning they, um, my one son had a coat door, he's got a coat door calendar, he had a little block of dark chocolate which he enjoyed. My other son's got a lint teddy calendar and he, um, I'm just sharpening, he um, had a, well it's a lint calendar in the shape of a teddy and he had an enormous lint bear, well, I say enormous, not the giant size, so he had a lint bear and then they had the other calendar that my neighbour gave them was a um, Cadbury Heroes calendar, so they had a Cadbury's cream egg one. Now. They're, they don't like all of them. One of my, the one son who had the um, bar of dark chocolate, he doesn't like the cream egg sweets. I don't blame him, nor do I. So he gave it to his brother. They're going to swap. So um, they've decided that one boy will have all those and then the other one will have all the something else. I can't remember what they've decided, but they've worked it out between them. So my one son only had this bar of dark chocolate, which was fine. He was happy. The other one had this huge lint bear and he ate it. He bit the head off and it was so big he could hardly contain it in his mouth. He's got really small mouth. I was laughing at him and he said the ears were solid chocolate and he was just really struggling to eat. It was quite funny. And then he had two of the um, chocolates from the other calendar as well. I said to him, my goodness, you're going to feel sick. He said, no, of course not, mother. You know, <laughs> wolf down all this chocolate before his breakfast. But uh, he's gone off to college now. I'm sure he'll be fine. But uh, don't usually indulge too much in these sort of things. But, you know, it's Christmas. And as I say, I must have just been very weak-willed on the day that they asked me for these. So... Uh, they are enjoying them. Now I'm colouring this, I'm leaning on this um, spiral binding, which I'm not too keen on leaning on. I did see a suggestion the other day, someone didn't, said they weren't keen on the spirals in the middle of a picture. You know, if you get one of your 
um, colouring book spiral bound you may find that because if the picture goes across as a double page then um, the spiral goes through the double page someone suggested binding them at the top now I think that could be much better because you're un you wouldn't put your hand on it if it was at the top of the page would you oh we've got one more I didn't think I was going to colour them all for you but um, I'm talking and just absent-mindedly doing it so uh, it's getting done so uh, we may make this what how are we doing for time yeah we'll probably make this the last little bit and then we'll do um, the rest of this um, in a second video for tomorrow just um, you know we don't want to be going on for too long because there's quite a lot left with this sort of swirly bit I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it and the stars as well which I can show you um, how I'm going to do them we've also got some robins so let's zoom out and see where we're at and have a think so we've got the hangers for the red ornaments still to do um, we've got the um, as I say we've got all the stars and this swirly bit so we will um, come back for a second instalment tomorrow so thank you very much for watching and happy colouring